Brad, Raleigh has grown, man. I haven't yes. been here since 2014. It's crazy. Ha- Don't ask me why I have sunglasses on inside. It's hot here. The sun <laughs> is tough. Yeah, Raleigh's supported by, I think, it's just like a grassroots residential city where people have actual income. The fundamentals are here. And like John, we were talking about when we were walking around, it's like Raleigh never inflated like California, Manhattan, Miami. Yeah, we don't see that. Yeah. We don't see like the the Florida, yeah. Arizona, all those other places. Yeah. Yeah. Puerto Rico. What, because what goes up fast tends to come down right. too, more volatile. Yeah. So realtors, let's talk about that for a second. I have a lot of realtors who follow me. And my big thing, and you've got this big company that does software building landing pages, managing social media, CRM sales. Right. Because I, I tell people, if you're in the if you're a realtor, here's the thing. To let's be honest for a second, not if anyway. Most realtors make no money. Yep. But the good ones make crazy money. Right. And so it's a real like the Pareto principle, 80-20. It's for it's twenty percent of realtors make all the money. I th- I looked at one point years ago, the average realtor was making like fifteen thousand a year, and the reason is, I will give three reasons and get your opinion. Number one, you have to know how to build a personal brand in the world. I I've been fortunate enough to build a nine million person social media brand across different platforms, but and that took me blood, sweat, and tears to know how to do that. That's number one. Number two, you have to master persuasion. Okay, know how to close. I close deals for a living. I buy, you know, I'm doing 50 deals. I have always 50 deals open in general that I'm trying to close. Not necessarily all real estate, but you know, buying Radio Shack, Pier One, just I've got different things. But the third thing you need automation. That's right. And that's where, you know, the CRM you built comes in. Right, so I think the problem is most real estate agents, they become a realtor because they're good at sales, Right. but they don't understand the other two. Yes. So what they'll do is they'll go out and, and like I need leads, so they'll pay Zillow to go out and, yeah. and generate them leads. The problem is like, if they're spending $1,000 in Zillow, yeah, they're gonna get $1,000 worth of leads, but who gets the thousand dollars worth of brand recognition? Who gets exactly. the thousand Zillow dollars gets all exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yes. So they're they're only they're thinking short sighted as far as it's just about the lead, not understanding it's about the brand. It's yes. about building that database. Yeah. So I think that's really the key. And and the other piece is the automation is I think the biggest value pretty much any company has nowadays, but especially real estate, is data. Yes. And so what they'll do is they won't focus on their database or they'll go out and use, you know, the broker says, hey, use our CRM, our system yes. and everything. Well, who's owning all of that data and the agent's not understanding they're like, that's my main value. Yes. So. Yeah, and I'll tell you, there's a principle in business called the consideration cycle. Mm-hmm. And people forget that. So a lot of people have this misnomer and they go, okay, the way to buy, uh, to convince and persuade somebody to use me as a realtor, to convince the homeowner to sell to your client, is to have all these ninja techniques, no body language, NLP, all that. There's valid points to that, but there's a consideration cycle, which means some people aren't ready to sell. Mm-hmm. And no matter how sweet of a talker you are, if somebody's not ready to do something because A, they don't have the money, or B, they don't have another house, so they a lot of people don't wanna sell till they know where they're moving, nothing you do as a realtor helps. All right. the NLP body language, <laughs> closing, I mean, look, I close, I, I buy companies, most of the companies I buy are doing at least $500 million of revenue. So I'm sitting across the table as a buyer of Radio Shack or Steinmart, and when I bought Pier One is doing 120 million a month. So I'm sitting across the table negotiating and I've done this for a long time. And even with all my experience, I can't close deals. It took me six months to buy Radio Shack, bought it from a billionaire guy. I understood the consideration cycle. So automation right. allows a realtor to bring in people who aren't ready and you build a top of the funnel is wide. And then to keep up with them so that the moment they're ready to buy, you're top of mind as a realtor, that's the magic. And I did that, you know, I started in insurance. I was doing insurance door to door stuff, kind of literally door to door. And I realized some people just aren't ready. Mm -hmm. 
but if I could keep up with them. But the problem was for me, this was before automation was big, I couldn't keep up with all the people. So I had spreadsheets and I had note cards. With software now, while you sleep, it can be like three week reminder to send a text to them, email, and you have a sequence. It's like, hey, it's me, and I'll check it up. It's, but in, in yeah. addition to that, so you, there's really, in my opinion, there's two pieces of it. There's the, the automation of yep. the email drips, the texting, all that kind of stuff. But then the other side is that data point of what is that moment where they are ready to engage. Yes. And so if you've got the systems in place that literally will send you a push notification that says, hey, that person that you labeled as a, as a, you know, a C-level lead, a, a bad right. lead, now they're back on the site or they're doing this, like AI is telling you, these are the five yes. people you need to call today versus the other 4,000 people yes. whatever, they're not gonna do it. Prioritization, That's which right. is part of our. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna put a link below, go check out the software um, now we're doing a joint venture, Brad and I with his company, to bring this software. There's already, how many clients on it now? About a thousand. Well, it's a thousand realtors using this. And I'm gonna put a link below and I'm gonna put a special, Brad's gonna give a special deal for my followers that are watching this. So we'll put, there'll be a coupon code below. Click this, if you are a realtor, go try this software. You can cancel any time, right? That's right, yep. You can cancel, try it for a month. I'm now coming behind this, putting what I've learned in software, what I've learned in sales, automation, social media, branding behind this. If you're a realtor and you are kind of feeling like you're overwhelmed, let software change your life. Exactly. Like people forget that. And if you look at the wealthiest people, they've let software change their life. And if you look, look at Jeff Bezos, he automated Amazon mm -hmm. and built AWS, built Amazon. And so, Everybody's dream is passive income. Passive income is generally not possible in the modern world without a good piece of software. Yeah, just, just to work smarter, not harder. That's concept. right. Yep. If working hard was the number one thing that created wealth, then my mom, when she was, who was a single mom, would have been the wealthiest person in the world because single moms, some of them worked three jobs, construction workers, yep. valets. You know, this is the heart and soul of the world is people just doing everyday farmers, coal miners, all this stuff. But unfortunately, and it's not a good thing, it's not fair, but the reality of the economy is you can not only rely on hard work. You have, in fact, there's something called conscientiousness, which is the number one trait that wealth creators have in common. This is a scientific kind of fact. And so it's made up of four sub facets. Conscientiousness is diligence, which is hard work prudence, which is smart work, organization, which is what the software can do mm -hmm. for you, and then perfectionism, which is double checking so you don't make mistakes. If you think about it, this, we'll click below, this can do three out of the four, then the hard work is up to you. That's right. So, good, my man. Cool. I'm jetting out of here, but I wanted to do a little video with Brad. We were looking at real estate, so he's got his software calling him right now. <laughs>